Hey, we are right, PRE. I'm here with Charles from Digital Garage. Charles, tell me a bit more about the background and the history of Digital Garage. Uh, we've uh, we've been around 23 years, based in uh, Banbury in North Oxfordshire. Started in 2001. We were predominantly a reseller um, uh, in the early days, focused very much on the post-production environment for broadcast TV. Uh, but since then, we've uh, we've morphed into more of a systems integrator. Uh, and uh, and have broadened our skills to include uh, other areas within the uh, within production technology, such as camera studios, audio environments, and such like. It was interesting speaking to Jack earlier on, and some of the projects that you've worked together on, in particular, some of the kind of e-gaming and you know e-sports. Tell me a bit more about that, and in particular, I'm interested about the workflow and your design methodology around that. Okay, well, well, typically, uh, most of our clients in this arena are educational establishments, and uh, an educational establishment will talk to us usually very early on in their thinking to find out what might be possible, what would they, uh, what could they achieve within the uh, budget restraints that they have available, uh, and uh, and it may well be that they that they are looking to build a new facility, so they may have a brownfield site that they want to develop. And uh, it's it's very appropriate to bring us in at that stage, so that we can sit down with the with the with their consultants. We can sit down with the architects uh, and the uh, and the uh, people with finance who are involved in the finance, and we can talk to them about their aspirations. What is it that they're actually looking to achieve, uh, and make sure that we've got all the ground points covered uh, before they've even you know put the first spade into the soil. Uh, that's a really interesting approach, especially working in collaboration like that. Usually I find working like that, there's sometimes some friction. Whose voice gets heard in that? Is it a consultant's voice? Is it the end user's voice? Is it your voice? We want to make sure that we want to make sure that all the stakeholders are heard. We will, we will ensure that we have individual meetings with different stakeholders to ensure that their points are heard. So the stakeholders could well be the academics. It could well be the uh, the course leaders. It could well be the uh, the the uh, the bursar's office. Uh, you know, it, whoever whoever it is, we ensure that that they are uh, they are heavily involved from the from the start. That said, it's very important that we make our points clear as well. We want to make sure that we want to make sure that everybody's heard our point of view with regards to to how the the, the building is designed, how it's put up. And, uh, and, and what the containment is, uh, uh, it within the building to ensure that, that we achieve the best results, uh, when the, when the facility opens. And are you also responsible for the maintenance of the facility? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we're not a, we're not a supply and forget, uh, a supplier. We will, uh, we will not only, uh, we will not only deal with the build, the install and the commissioning of the equipment, but we will then go on to, provide ongoing maintenance and support as well as training uh for to ensure that all the staff know how to get the best out of it we have seen so many educational installs where where a, a, an enormous amount of money has been spent on the technology but actually the staff don't know how to use it and therefore they're not getting the best out of it and how have you seen the landscape change post covid specifically around the new requirements around sustainability, you know, that, that part of it. Have you, have you changed your design methodology as, as a result? Yeah. So as a, as an ISO, an ISO 14001 company, we strive continuously to be, to, to do things in a more sustainable manner. So, uh, so, uh, for example, all our company cars are now electric, uh, and, uh, all our packaging is recyclable. Uh, and, uh, we always take care of, uh, everything using best possible practices with regards to the environment and, uh, recycling of, 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 uh, unused materials. Um, but in addition to that, we'll also talk to the customers about, uh, ensuring that their facility is, is run in the most sustainable way. Um, so, uh, if he, if heat can be reused, uh, rather than expended, then we will use find ways to reuse heat. If we can, uh, if we can uh, find, uh, if we can, uh, you know, uh, get people to collaborate with a project re uh, remotely, 
as opposed to on premise, then we will will do that in order to save money, but also save the uh, save the planet too as much as possible. And have you seen an increased uptake of networked and IP led sort of solutions? Oh yes, absolutely. Uh, we. Uh, I can't remember uh, the last time we laid a traditional SDI cable. Uh, everything is now IP. Uh, everything is file based. Um, you know, we, we, we're doing more with MDI than we've ever done before. We're doing more with SMPTE 20, 2110. Um, and, uh, and it's all about interconnecting uh, technology in that way. It allows us as well to, you know, to build, uh, build two camera studios but have only one control room for instance you know you can have that sort of flexibility if you do everything over ip brilliant charles thank you very much for your time pleasure thank you, thank you.